Hello, this is John Spielman with the video version of my latest column, 165, which I've called Inspired Defence. Um, I hope I'm going to give you a rest from the horrible news in the world, but I think before I start I would like to salute the Russian chess players who've appealed to stop the war, and this is it's on this page uh, here. It's on the ch on chess bases front page, a link to it, and uh, I think it's admirable that, that they've done this, and um, I hope they don't get into to too much trouble. As yeah, well, anyway, well done them. Okay, so I've called this inspired defence. It's nothing to do with the Ukraine. It's to do with chess, and um, <coughs> I started with a couple of queen sacrifices in the Belgrade Grand Prix. The first of them um, in um, blah 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 um, what is the game? Griezchuk against Andrekin. Saw Andrekin sorry, play a lovely queen sacrifice which turned the game round and then a, a couple of days later Anishgiri played a queen sacrifice against um, where have you got it? Against Pantala, Pantala Hare Krishna. I'm just going to check that we are recording and we are good. And um, that was also interesting. <laughs> so I thought about the fence in general and what I did was I turned to one of my favourite books from my childhood, The Middle Game by uh, Max Erver and Hans Kramer. I presume that Kramer wrote this and that Erver did a bit of checking and put his imprimatur on it, his sort of signature of sign of approval. He was, of course, the world ch champion, uh, had been world champion, though quite a lot earlier. This was written in the 1950s and early 60s. It was 12 volumes in Dutch, and it got translated by W.H. Cousins, who wrote some chess books in his own right, including a lovely book, The King Hunt, in which every game has a king wandering somewhere near the eighth rank. <laughs> and... Um, it was translated in two volumes, um, Static Features and Dynamic Features and Psychological Ones, I think it's called, the second volume. And the defence is somewhere in the Dynamic Features. And I just had a look to see what they had to say. Obviously it's going to be different from what we say today. They had a couple of chapters on Wilhelm Steinitz and Emanuel Lasker. And I thought, well, nowadays we could add... Um, Tigran Petrosian and Ulf Anderson and indeed Sergei Karyakin and um, I mean also um, um, Magnus Carlsen himself and Kikara Nakamura are especially good at defending when they have to but I mean everybody is anyway let's have a look at the games um, I didn't say anything about Karyakin's politics. I'm talking about chess now. Um, so, um, let's have a look at these games. I've got six games to look at. We start with this. It's uh, Skaveningen. And, um, well, actually, it starts as a tied Marnov and then becomes a Skaveningen after uh, Grishchuk played a3. And he gets a slightly unusual position. Normally you had the bishop on e2 in the Schaven England, but here it's on... But this is not very unusual. Rook e8, it's the sort of move they play. Ulf used to play it lots of, lots of times in the Schaven England. d7. I thought that they were preparing to play knight takes knight in bishop c6, but apparently not. Uh, and Draken plays rook c8 first. Still no attempt to move the knight to b3 or anything. Knight h5, queen f3. Now I imagine after knight f6 he'd have done something else different. Maybe, I don't know, um, one of the knight e2 maybe I thought. What does the engine think of knight e2? Knight d2, g4 is one move it thinks of. So if g4, knight takes, bishop takes, e5. I s this doesn't work really takes, takes, knight d5, of course. 
and it's not really working. Okay. So, um, because now if knight takes knight, you can take and play pawn takes, and if pawn takes bishop, you can play queen h5 and mate him. So if knight takes, check here, pawn takes, pawn takes, well, you don't have to, maybe you could try bishop g4, and queen to there is going to give mate. That's the end of the game. Okay, I hadn't particularly investigated this. Anyway, he played queen f3, g6, f5, so he's managed to open up lines, but has given the e5 square for the horse. Queen h3, queen d8, very difficult move, I think, to play. Uh, basically, you want to stop white getting an f6 in any circumstances, and so that's what you do. I don't know if you're also preparing to play pawn takes pawn, maybe, without knight d5 hitting the queen. It's a very unobvious move to me, queen d8, but I don't play this opening for black. And it also, it sacrifices a pawn. Now, here, knight d5 is fairly obvious. Bishop d8. And here, Grishchuk played bishop h6. I said this has been shown as game of the week. Uh, previously, but I, I just want to go over it very quickly. Should have played b4, and one line goes b4, queen a4, here, here. Um, which is probably about equal, I suppose. Okay, they got to this position, and Van Draken found a lovely, um, a lovely sacrifice. Queen takes rook. Rook takes queen, bishop takes knight. Of course, you couldn't play bishop takes knight at once. Uh, do I even give that line? So, bishop takes knight, question mark, question mark, two question marks, in fact. Queen e6 check. Exclam, I suppose, if we're going to be generous with our exclams and look to their mate. But he played uh, queen takes and bishop takes, and suddenly... Black, the attack which had looked so promising has faltered and it is white who is attacking. Now could he have tried knight e7 check here? He, of course he couldn't because the rook is now on e1. I'm being stupid otherwise queen e6 check would work. So he had to go queen e3, knight g4 and it just happens that the whole thing blows up in his face. Um... Queen d2, you could try queen d4, maybe it doesn't matter very much. You can't take because the bishop takes knight and there's a pin. He tried bishop b2, knight g7, it's clam. Now you could try queen takes knight, takes, 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 and try to play this position by playing g4, but obviously you're lost. That doesn't even actually have to take the bishop yet, he could maybe play rook e4. But I mean, if you just take, take here, 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 bishop f6 takes, rook takes, queen takes pawn, bishop b5. And obviously white has a passed pawn, but black is going to mate him long before the passed pawn really does anything very much. Um, and with the knight on the board, there aren't going to be very many checks. Okay, so what happened was, they. this in fact happened. So you went rook f1, knight to there. Sorry, rook f1. What's happening here? It's chess base being a pain. Notation. There we are. I have no idea what happened there. Naughty chess base. Uh, and Andraken was very efficient. He played this good move. He kept his pawns intact, which isn't that important with the knight on the board. And here, Grishchuk resigned because he's going to play bishop c6, completely cementing the queen side. When you're playing against a queen, if you can put a, put a minor piece defended by a pawn and defending a pawn, which is a bishop, isn't it? Then it's fantastic, because the queen is completely useless. All of her all of her power, all of her forking power is not blowing any houses down. It's not doing anything at all. So he resigned. So a very fine game, I thought. Um, and it, yeah, it was also featured on here. Now then we've got Hare Krishna Giri, which is an open Spanish. And, um, okay, this is one of the lines. Um, okay, I don't 
play I'm not an E4 player but I knew this was a line bishop to there is to surround the pawn they probably can't take it yet because it takes takes c5 but it's rook to there b4 apparently is a novelty I mean there are some other moves there's d2 rook e2 this is apparently is one of the lines and the other line is rook f d8 rook e3 knight d4 takes c5 which looks slightly better for white to me but maybe I don't know looks a little bit better for white to me but um, okay, so this is what happened. So Geary has um, got his pawn back, but White has some attacking chances. E6 is quite a natural move. Queen E4 was also possible. He um, C4, and here actually Rook F3 is perfectly good. But Geary played a lovely Queen F3. Rook F3, Queen E6 check is necessary. Queen takes rook to there, bishop c5. And here you can just take the bishop and you can also do this if you want to, which is rather wonderful. As the engine points out, check. Has to go to h1, because if he goes to f1, bishop b6 check. Bishop, you have to play queen f3, takes, takes here. And this is absolutely nothing. I mean, with two, two extra pawns on the queen side, it must be absolutely fine for black. I don't know what the engine says, I'm just going to ask them politely. Houdini says 0.12 to white, and I've got Stockfish on here now as well. I've got several others, we'll ask Mr. Master Stockfish as well if it'll speak to me. Are you going to speak to me, oh great master? You're giving it as 0.38 or 0.27. Um, you could also probably actually play Bishop d4, uh, which if they played queen f3 you'd be able to take and take and play um c5 which would be lovely but they can try to move their king out because he's blocked the d file so also in this position bishop d4 check so now queen f3 you just go takes takes and that's absolutely fine for black so um and instead after king e2 rook e7 check can't go rook f2 because of king d3 and apparently this is also a draw probably you should just play um king f1 well if you go king f1 you can go rook f8 check if you want to and i mean again with the with the bishop on d4 you'll be fine the, the exchange down anyway uh that was possible but giri played the lovely queen f3 takes queen e6 now that much less good I think with the Queen coming back to f7 at least that's the claim uh, Queen e6 check Queen f7 takes takes Bishop b4 is a nice move anchoring the Bishop on a good square um, so he took took Queen to there check here take Queen e6 Rook f7 Rook e1 Rook doubles and this position basically should be fine for black I mean one reason is that if you just took off the black squared Bishop the two black queenside pawns and white c and f pawns and swap the rooks and unpin the rook obviously on f7 then that ending with a rook and pawns you, you don't even need the h pawn the rook and the g7 pawn against the h pawn and the queen is just a draw anyway what happened was they actually he went rook d1 king h8 to unpin rook d7 and now black is just in time to play rook takes f2 I wonder how far he calculated when he played this Geary, or if he even knew this. It may have been calculation with an engine, of course. If it is, clever engine. And they agreed to draw. There's absolutely no point going up the board. And this is absolutely not better for white. You don't have to play A4, but you can. And, you know. By the time white gets anywhere near the black rook, black will have his king up and be starting to and be, be starting to get huge counterplay. So it's not going to be dangerous at all. Right. So um, what actually happened was they agreed to draw by perpetual check. So two lovely instances of queen sacrifices. So I went to part two of the middle game by Irva and Kramer starts about page 90 I think and that's what it matters obviously it doesn't matter 
I've got the old hardbacks, two volumes, which as I said, I had in my bed, above my bed when I was a sprog. And I got two, took two games by Steinitz and two by Lasker. There's another chapter of general stuff, but I can't do too much. This is a game, a um, consultation game. I haven't even thought about it. What happened? It doesn't look great for White, does it? White's position is pretty foul in many ways. I mean, okay, Bishop to there can't be particularly intelligent unless. It certainly hasn't hurt Black to play g6. g5 threatening to advance. Queen d5 threatening to give some checks. Queen to there, rook to there. And here now the question is should you um, play h3? And the basic rule is you don't weaken um, you don't weaken your pawn king's pawn cover unless it stops something. Here h3 just encourages g4, which is extremely uh, suboptimal. So he should have done king h1. And actually the line that Steinitz gave doesn't work actually. You don't play queen h6 because of, I think, queen d5. Queen d5 at slam. Queen h6 dubious, queen d5. At slam. But you just play rook e4, king g2, rook f8, bishop g4. And here rook takes g4 is better for black, I suppose. To there, there's nothing better than here. Here takes. Check, check, exclam. Should give that an exclam. And now you weaken white's pawns. I looked at this and I thought, is this that clear? Because black's king is a little bit exposed as well. I gave rook to there, b5, says the engine. And it says black is much better. It looks, it doesn't look that clear to me, but I can believe it's true. That basically you, you can't attack the black king. Though it's not, you know, it's not an easy position. If White's king weren't exposed, then White would be absolutely fine. Here, this engine's giving clear advantage. And I'm going to ask Master Stockfish as well, actually. I think Master Stockfish, if we ask it, um, gives it as a bit less. And I think, I think this is probably partly as a function of the fact that computers really love queens. They count them, they give them many beans, and they give them rather more beans than they ought to. I would say this is much closer to my assessment. Slight advantage for black than stockfish is in this, than Houdini is in this case. And remember, when you look with a computer, it's only a bean, glorified bean counter. It can do fantastic things, but it's using whatever it's been told to do. Unless it's alpha zero and it's told itself, or Layla, I wish I could make Layla work on my machine. Haven't succeeded yet. Haven't tried very hard either, it has to be said. And so, you know, its assessment is a question of uh, maximising the minimum score it can get against the opponent's best move, maximining, or minimaxing the opponent's move when you play your own move. Right, another one by Steinitz. Oh, sorry, we didn't we didn't see what happened, did we? I'm sorry, I forgot to show you what actually happened. After H3, your man played G4. You can't play Bishop takes because of Rook takes takes Rook takes and mate follows very shortly. So you had to go h takes and then h5 exclam. Can't possibly allow pawn takes pawn, so you had to try g5. Now apparently, according to this score, which I think I picked up from, it didn't seem to be on Megabase, so I picked it up from one of the, one of the big online databases. Apparently, black repeated moves a couple of times before he played queen f4. I assume, therefore, that Steinitz's um, partner was playing the even numbered move. Steinitz had played move one, I assume. And eventually he found queen f4. They didn't agree a draw because of the repetition. And this just wins because of rook takes g2, exclam, which Mr. Steinitz. Uh, world champion Steinitz must have played, or future world champion Steinitz. Was he already been? When was the first world championship match? Uh, sorry, my chess history is terrible. 
when was the first World Chess Championship? I apologise for this. World Chess Championship Championship Wiki. I just lost it. Uh, I apologise for this. So Steinitz was world champion from 1886. Uh, sorry, 1886. So he was world champion at this point. And he played rook takes g2 check, which would not have been a difficult move for him to find. And there we are. That was the end of that. And I'm going to put that away. And then I've got two games by Alaska. Um, yes, I... Uh, have I got a second Steinitz game? I've got a second Steinitz game. First, nowadays we play bishop f6. Normally, this is not a particularly dangerous way to play it. I mean, you could have gone bishop d3 first, couldn't you? It's probably a bit more sensible. Steinitz has really not done this especially well, but I imagine he was quite pleased to see f5, because although it's dangerous, it's also weakening. Rookie one, good move, preparing to play knight f1. Here Steinitz played bishop f3, uh, which is, I guess he may have known his opponent as well, and known his opponent wouldn't be willing to take a positional advantage. Because actually sometimes you just have to say, all right, I've got a positional advantage this way, and I accept that it's not quite what I want, but it's enough. And if he had taken twice an f3 and played knight to d5 to f4, it's definitely not pleasant for white. Very unpleasant, though not completely over. And um, so that's what he should have done, black. I mean, the engines instead give g3, which looks pretty. So they give bishop c4, sorry, bishop c4, knight e4, f3, knight to there, rook to there, they give. And they claim that this is okay. That threatens rook e6, by the way. King f8, rook e2. And, it, and apparently if you play knight f3 takes, queen takes, knight g3, rook to there, d5, it just doesn't work. Which is bad luck for, 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 for black, because rook f1 is going to happen, and then it's going to blow up in, white, in black's face. So this is, this is not easy to see. <laughs> and, you know, you, you wonder, can you play queen g4 here still? Uh, what happens if you go queen g4? Probably pawn takes pawn, I'm guessing. And I imagine that that wins the game, doesn't it? D takes d6. Queen takes c4. Queen d7. Splat. Right. So, um, d um, so Stunis played bishop f3. He was human. He made a concession. Probably wasn't very happy about it. Ulf Anderson might be such a principled player, he would have avoided playing it, actually. Now, rook e3, actually g3 is fine, knight g5, bishop g2, queen f3, which looks beautiful. But you play bishop takes, knight takes, 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 and you've got the advantage because of the weakness of black's uh, kingside. I mean, this is, should be better for white. Not the end of the world, but quite nice, quite a nice advantage, weak, e, weak e6 pawn. And, um, but he went rook e3, normal move. And here his opponent started to wilt. He should have gone bishop d5 to protect his bishop. What happened is the knight to there happened and now you can't take because bishop takes bishop will happen at the end. And it's starting to go very wrong by this stage. You can't play f4 because of rook e4. And um, this does, just doesn't work basically. It's all very splendid but just going back essentially refutes this. Rook f8 is totally desperate. Queen d6 it slammed. Not, not at all difficult to start as rook takes f4. And he resigned. I mean rook takes g3 would not have won, sorry. And queen takes f4 would not have won, but, but that's what he prepared. Right. Nice defence by Steinitz, though he did make a concession. Good heavens. Then we've got Vinava Alaska, which is an interesting game. Apparently, um, this is Alaska playing a slightly odd um, Spanish. I don't know if he should have maybe tried to. Could he have gone 92 here? I wonder. Is there some trick with takes takes? I wonder. 
takes takes knight d6 no you can't play takes takes knight d6 you maybe go takes takes f6 or something I wonder I'm just going to ask the engine because I would definitely like can I play knight e2 g6 says the engine g6 all right yes that is true okay knight c5 that's an excellent move um very confident move Lasker was a great defender he calculated and he believed himself and this now actually probably white should really take and play c4 and he dissolves one of his queenside weaknesses and the engine claims it's okay for white and i can quite believe it no reason not to believe it actually that this is okay for white but he played queen h5 i can see myself being very reluctant to and now queen a6 it's glam rook to there and queen takes a2 and over in kramer i guess hans kramer says well this is the sort of move could only be played by a great player or a weak player and the thing is that laska has realized as computers do all the time as they taught us really or retaught us that you're defending h7 from c2 which means that the attack is not really working which is a splendid thing so he had to play rook c1 and now you stick the queen in the middle rook h3 you can take the bishop and now you get in time for knight e6 e2 rook e7 defending f7 and this is dangerous but you have a plan of pushing the a pawn and unless white can do something and the queen is all over you queen e4 he could also play knight f8 i don't know i think he wouldn't have liked this i wouldn't like having my queen kicked backwards at all so i'd be very loath to do that but it's possible the engine doesn't seem to mind but we'll turn the engine off let's um so f3 queen g6 queen h4 rook to there f4 queen e4 he's groveling around very nicely really annoying white knight f8 he must have enjoyed this annoyance i imagine g4 may be the wrong move actually um but i mean it's, it's a difficult position isn't it uh very enticing blah 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 since it prepares shall we bother to do one typo remove removal pr pr prepare fours i suppose we will and um okay so he but uh possibly wrong it says queen wait a minute where are we very enticing rook rook f3 a5 f8 to there queen takes the knight to there and the claim is that this is that you're in time to cause a lot of trouble which is you're going to play f5 and then the queen's going to get kicked away and you're going to just try to make the guy obviously so if a, a4 f5 a3 bishop h6 is at least dangerous so what we're saying uh we'll give a line here here i'm not even using an engine here here and here i think you'd probably have to play queen takes rook if you went there say then we would go bishop takes pawn and that's bound to be very dangerous surely says says me without actually calculating it takes takes check king back i don't know maybe not let me just ask the engine here because i think i've got to the point where yeah bishop takes g7 it doesn't like actually bishop takes g7 Queen takes g7 minus plus so that was me being overexcited but it says queen g3 knight e6 takes exclam that's a good move isn't it h5 okay so that was a variation it's not it's just it's a, i mean i presume that you don't play a4 eg if right uh a4 it doesn't actually give a4 f5 a3 question mark okay so he played g4 and laska defended himself and and the 
uh, foot soldiers started to advance and they're really dangerous. Uh, if he goes e6 takes takes, you can play you can play knight e6 here actually, because if rook takes, of course there's queen g4 check. And so once you've done this, the game's over really. The queen's safe on c4, and there's always a danger of a1 equals queen happening. So white can't really attack. I guess he tried queen g2, did he? King h2 he tried actually. I thought you tried to play rook f4, but even if you do, it's not going to help. The whole position is disgusting now. Ninety six, queen takes, rook to there, to there, to there. And basically, so by taking the the a pawn, what Lasky did was he gave himself play. He had to defend for a while. Uh, here, the guy resigned because if king to there, you can actually mate by force quite prettily. So very good defence by Lasky indeed. And I'm going to finish with one more game, which is a very famous game from a World Championship match where Laska played the opening, where he made a gross blunder at some point. Bishop b6 is unusual. Uh, e4 is a bit... Bishop b3 is a bad move, I think. Here you have to go Bishop d2, I believe. Queen d2, Bishop b4, Knight c3 is apparently okay. After Castle's queen side, it just turns out black is winning. There's this massive, massive pin. And this is all very vexing. So Laska played a3, and your man, at this point, he's played knight h6, Janaski. David Janaski, and he should just have played bishop c5, which is not a difficult move to, to at least analyse. If b4 takes, maybe he thought the guy was going to recapture. Bishop takes, but then I, I mean I started wondering, but then Queen G5 and the position is still a wreck. Um, there's really nothing to be done. If Knight B5, you can play Knight takes Knight, and there are no clever tricks or sort of back ranks and things. Why would there be? Black is a single tempo away from getting developed. H4, Queen E7, yeah, it's just over basically. Everything is disastrous. So. Um, But, and the other the other line is bishop c5, b4, bishop takes d4, pawn takes queen, bishop takes knight check, which is obviously murder. Bishop d2, rook takes is easiest. If king e2, you just take the queen and take the pawn. And you've got more pieces. Rook takes is simplest, bishop takes works as well. Got to play queen takes, really. And let us do a body count. Black has two knights and a pawn for a rook. Development is equal. Black is completely winning at a high level. And he would have won this. I mean, Lasker really couldn't defend this position. But as soon as he played one bad move, but knight h6, Lasker was fighting. b4, queen e5, knight c b5. And now he's got counterplay as well. Uh, we know that the there's danger on d4, but he's fighting. Knight f5, knight e4, knight e4. Bishop b7, queen c1, check king b8, knight f3, queen e4, bishop b2. Okay, even if this is slightly better for black, it's a fight, isn't it? It doesn't matter anymore. Uh, definitely, definitely a battle at this stage. It does look a bit better for black. I mean, I think if you play knight g4, something or bishop f6, as it says. Um... A little thought, little thought. Houdini gives d5 as a line of as big advantage, clear advantage, advantage, but at least white can fight. Sorry about my horrible typing. Houdini gives this as clear advantage, at least black, white, white can fight. Yeah, but at least white can fight. I hope you're enjoying my lovely typing, uh, and yeah, I'll look at you again. Okay, so that would have been, what actually happened was, um, he 
you put knight f5, rook c1, starting to get real counterplay now. Queen and queen takes pawn check here, and now suddenly, despite the huge queen, well, white has got an attack too. Bishop to there. I don't know if you could play something like bishop b4 check and king b8 or something, who knows. Rook c3. Lasker's really defending brilliantly here, castles. Suddenly, um, okay, black has pressure against d4, but this is obvious. And somehow, by a miracle, really, black has wh white has more pieces developed than black. Many more pieces developed than black. And it's a disaster. Bishop g4 is suggested by the engine. It's pretty miserable. Or if you go queen takes, just take the queen. And white should win. And uh, yeah, so, so Alaska won. Queen e5 takes here, takes. It's all the joy, isn't it? Check. Poor Yanaski just got crushed, didn't he? And he resigned. So, uh, some. There, Laska, Laska really rode his luck in this game. I mean, it really was a bit, a bit much. I mean, we know he was an unbelievable defender. But if we go to the first diagram, then it wasn't black magic, it was nerves. They said, oh, did Laska exert black magic on his opponents? Of course he didn't. He just made them. He put the absolute maximum pressure on them. And they often, often wilted because he was such a fantastic uh, defender that they just couldn't take it. So, um, well, a seminal game. I mean, in a game of great importance, it was game five of this match, was it? So Laska would have had time to fight back. But uh, the fact he won it rather than lost, obviously, had quite an effect. OK, well, I hope you've enjoyed this column on um, inspired defence. Just check that we have still got the recording going. And we have. And um, I'll see you now. The next one of these will be presumably on the 19th of March in a fortnight. And I may continue with some examples from Irvin and Kramer's chapter on general defence and maybe chuck in a bit of. I don't know. Well, we've had Petrus in playing King C6 recently. There's Ulf and, there, and there's, I mean, something by Ulf maybe, something ridiculous, in which he went backwards and showed that there are at least nine ranks on the chessboard. Anyway, see you next time. Cheers. Oh, I haven't.